giants play an important role in the mythology of both Ireland and Scotland. When you think of giants in Ireland, you probably immediately think of Giant's Causeway, and we will get to that later. But there are numerous other stories of giants in both Ireland and Scotland. For instance, in Irish mythology, the Fomorians are often referred to as giants. Now, the Fomorians are often referred to as being a supernatural monstrous race in Irish mythology, enemies of the two of Dedanon, who are often depicted in a more positive light compared to the Fomorians. Although the etymology of the word Fomorian is debated, some argue that it essentially means the underworld giants. The Fomorians were originally said to come from under the earth or under the sea, and they were later depicted as being sea raiders and giants. Some argue that the Fomorians represent the wild and brutal forces of nature, such as chaos and darkness. They are said in legend to have fought against the two de Danon at the epic battle of the Moitirit, and were defeated by the two de Danon. Now, if we turn our attention back to probably the most famous giant story in the world, the story of Giant's Causeway. Formed initially between 50 and 60 million years ago, and known to many as the eighth wonder of the world, Giant's Causeway in the north of Ireland was formed at a time when Ireland was still attached to North America. The otherworldly nature of this structure meant that many ancient and more modern cultures produced various stories about the Giant's Causeway. The most popular story um, goes something like this, although there is numerous variations within the traditional story. The mythical Irish giant, Finn McCool, built the causeway to get to Scotland in battle with a rival giant called Ben and Donor. The battle started by throwing massive stones at each other in a show of strength. One of them missed and became the Isle of Man. When Finn got to Scotland, he found that the Scottish giant was asleep but also far bigger than himself, so Finn returned back across the causeway. When Ben and Donner woke up, he came across the causeway intent on fighting Finn. In panic about the approaching Scottish giant, the much larger Scottish giant, Finn's wife dressed up her husband as a baby, and when Ben and Donner arrived, she said Finn wasn't home, and to be quiet as not to wake the baby. When Ben and Donner saw the baby, he decided that if the baby was that big, Finn must be massive. So he turned around and fled back across the causeway, ripping it up as he went. All that remains are the ends at Giant's Causeway and on the island of Staffa in the Inner Hebrides of Scotland, where similar formations are found, known as Fingal's Cave. So the moral of the story, of course, is don't mess with the Scots. Jokes aside, there are numerous other versions and different tales and different angles to Giant's Causeway, and many people just make, make their own up, um, as they are kind of, kind of all mythical stories after all. There is a beautiful poem, however, from the 19th century, written by Mary Ann, that deserves reciting. It has mo almost a, a Greek tragedy twist on the tale of, of Giant's Causeway, a tragic love story. As the poem reads, Finn had fallen in love with a Scottish maiden. Sad that he couldn't reach her, he walked along the shore, skimming stones out across the sea. Seeing the splash they made, Finn suddenly hit upon a plan. He would build a causeway in order to see his love. Finn laboured all day and made good progress in his task, extending the causeway nearly halfway across the sea. Tired, he went home to rest, confident he would finish the job the next day. But sadly, his grandmother had other ideas. Afraid of losing him forever to Scotland, she used her magic to call upon an enormous storm. The waves and the wind lashed the partly built causeway, and the rocks were torn apart. Finn woke the next day to see his handiwork had disappeared. Undaunted, he began to build a new causeway. Once more, the stone stretched out into the ocean, but that very night, his work was destroyed. Finn tried again and again. The harder he laboured, the more violent the storms. Worn out, he made one last attempt, building on through the night. The storms rose up around Finn, tearing at him with thunder and lightning, while wild waves beat at every rock he tried to lift. At last he reached the other side, but the trial was too much, even for a giant. Exhausted, he fell down and died in the arms of his beloved. Behind him, the causeway he had built slipped below the waves for a final time. 
A mighty thunderclap sounded and Finn's granny climbed to the top of a hill to see what had happened. Horrified by what her magic had done, she turned to stone. She stands there to this day. A Scottish folklore tale of a giant tells the story of the strongest giant in all of Scotland who sat atop Ben Lady, a hill I've climbed numerous times um, in the calendar area of Scotland. The story goes that he challenged all the other Scottish Fomorians to a show of strength, um, a stone throwing, a giant boulder throwing competition, and he won the contest. A large boulder called Samson's Putting Stone lies in the lower eastern slope of the Ben and is said to have been flung from the summit by Samson. What other stories of giants or versions of the Giant's Causeway story um, do you find interesting? Please let me know in the comments below and I might do a follow-up video. Please let me know other aspects of mythology in general um, you find interesting uh, and you would like to see a video on. Speaking of Ireland and Scotland and these isles in general, what is the ancient genetic history of these places? To find out, please click here. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and hit the bell and tell your friends and family about this channel. For ways to support through Patreon, buymeacoffee.com um, or my merch store, all the links will be in the description below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.